Hello there, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now, if you watch my channel with any regularity, you will know that I advocate good footwear as being an important cornerstone of your shoe collection or your wardrobe in general. And I often say that invest as much as you can in a good pair of shoes because that investment will pay you back. And I also make the point to say investing in the maintenance and appearance of your shoes with regular polishing, cleaning, is also a very important part of being an intentionally well-dressed man. This sort of ideal which I float that we should all seek to be, to get the best out of ourselves and the best out of our investment in clothing. But you may be surprised to know that I actually get many comments from viewers who will, you know, reflect an image to me or make comments to me that my traditional views on footwear are very outdated. Uh, and in the modern world, you know, comfort and ease of use are the watchwords which are important when it comes to footwear rather than this rather old-fashioned ideology which I have which says that shoes are a reflection of the wearer. Now of all places to find my thoughts on footwear being vindicated was in the Sunday Times when I read an article which had been written about uh, maybe six weeks ago now by a uh, a somewhat divisive character here in the UK called Jeremy Clarkson. Now he's most famous for fronting uh, television shows in relation to uh, motor cars and also he has a sort of side thing with farming here in the UK now as well. But Jeremy Clarkson is quite an outspoken character. He's not afraid of giving people his views regardless of whether they want those views or they're going to be embarrassed by his views. So I was absolutely shocked to find that he'd written an article in the Sunday Times about shoes. Now in this particular article, Mr. Clarkson was actually making comments about qualifications, academic, and their relative value in the world today. And he was using his own thought processes about employing people who work for him. Because in his various business sort of uh, directions that he goes in, he employs over 100 people. And he gave us a little bit of an insight into what he looks for in the hiring process. Because he told us he recently employed a man to work on his farm, specifically when he first met him by looking at that man's shoes. He could see that this young fellow was wearing the sort of shoes that he expected a hard-working agricultural man to be wearing. You know, sort of um, uh, brown brogues, that type of thing. And he based his decision on whether to hire that man or not solely on the type of shoes that he was wearing. Now, you might think he made this conversation or this observation tongue-in-cheek, but I don't believe it. It, it was the case because he says, I did not even look at that man's qualifications because it didn't matter. The job I was employing him for, I knew we could train him, we could teach him to do the job. What I wanted was somebody who showed me a, a reflection of their personality. And the shoes let me know that that was a hard-working, uh, you know, rugged young man who I could easily mould into the position that we were looking to fill. And then as if to underpin that, he goes on to say that some time before that, he was attending a family christening. And obviously he's a well-known celebrity here in the UK, so a chap uh, at the christening, unknown to him, so not a relative in any way, approached him and said, Mr. Clarkson, you know, I don't wish to uh, impose upon your enjoyment of the day, but I'm a huge fan. I am very much interested in working in the field of media and motor vehicles. And if there's any openings that ever come up, you know, I'd like to put my name forward. And as we've met, I thought I'd take the opportunity. And Clarkson goes on to say, well, you know, I get approached like this many times, but I had a look at this fellow and I looked at his shoes. Well-kept, well-maintained quality shoes. And I thought to myself, yeah, this is a young man that I can work with because, again, he's demonstrating something of his personality to those whom he meets by the way that he dresses himself and particularly his footwear. So Clarkson goes on to say, yeah, he employed him. He made an opportunity for that young man and off he went. The point he's making really is that he's not interested in qualifications, it is about the individual, but he uses footwear 
And in our case today, the quality of one's shoes and the maintenance of one's shoes as his sort of window into that person's life to get an indication of what they're like. And he's based hiring decisions on people's shoes. Now the reality is nobody is suggesting that wearing good quality shoes alone in life is going to get you ahead. You're not going to get a job you know, working for NASA or working in the City of London in finance just because you wear excellent shoes and you've got a mirror shine on them. But what they do tell people about you is a few things about you, your personality, whether you care about your appearance. If you care about the way that people look at you and draw an inference from your appearance, it says a lot about your personality. It says that you are quite you know, uh, you have a good attention to detail. You are thoughtful about your appearance and you could fulfill a good ambassadorial role, maybe in a, in a job or profession, because you're already thinking about how those people you encounter will receive the image of you when they meet and how that impacts them. So whilst, you know, I'm not saying shoes are the panacea to maybe a future career, what I am saying is that they do play a disproportionate part in the way that people will draw a judgment of you based on your appearance. Now, in my sort of journey into the psyche of footwear and its impact upon people around us, um, I often refer back to a quite old and somewhat outdated reference book these days, but it's New Dress for Success, which was written by uh, John Malloy many, many years ago. But I still love it because a lot of the psychology uh, which he applied in his book about the way people dress is still very relevant today. And he makes an observation when he talks about footwear and its impact on people uh, in his book, in which he goes on to say that the working classes, right, the majority of us, we tend to think of our shoes as functional. We think of function first, how long are they going to last? How good are they going to be at the job that I'm going to put them to? Whereas the middle classes and the upper classes, they tend to think of their footwear more as decorative. Yes, they obviously have to be functional as well, but there's more of a consideration on the decorative ability of those shoes to have an impact on our working lives, our professions, uh, and any parts like that, or, you know, the executive image perhaps that you're trying to portray to people. It's not just functionality, decorative has an important part to play as well. Now me myself, I'm a working class guy, all right? Because I, I work for a living. I am working class. Certain elements of the way that I look at life might be described as middle class, but yes, I'm a working man, I'm working class. So I try to straddle the line of functional and decorative as much as I can. Whilst I love, you know, what I would describe this pair of Grenson shoes here as being quite decorative, you know, they have a leather sole, so they are less functional uh, and they are quite pretty, but they're certainly not shoes I'd want to work in the field wearing but certainly they are shoes I would wear, you know, if I visited London, because the leather soles are great on pavements, they look stylish, they're sleek, the broguing gives them a certain appeal, but they're less functional. So it's about straddling the middle ground or owning shoes from both categories is probably the best way to go. Now, following John T. Malloy's psychology sort of um, experiments within his book, dress for success, I tried a little experiment myself. And on my YouTube community page, I issued a request for people to tell me some stories and anecdotes of how wearing footwear had altered uh, some element of their lives. And you'd be surprised, I had quite a lot of responses from people who wanted to talk about how their shoes uh, boosted their sense of self-confidence, actually had been a key part of well-being in some way, mental well-being or their social capital that they gained with other people by wearing high quality shoes. By far the most common response I received was that people felt boosted by the fact they received many compliments and words of encouragement from people, other people, strangers, who saw their shoes and wanted to say I just want to tell you, I love the shine on your shoes, or you have beautiful shoes. I vividly remember myself an occasion in, a, I was in Rhode Island attending a conference in the USA. 
traveling in an elevator in a nice hotel. I was just myself and uh, a, a, an American gentleman in the, unknown to me, just a stranger, traveling in the elevator just on one journey. And this chap looked at me, I was wearing a pair of uh, brown shiny brogues, and he said to me, I just got to say, sir, I absolutely love the shine on your shoes. Now, he was just making, you know, passing compliment because, you know, probably uncomfortable with the silence in the elevator and he wanted to say something. But the thing that he struck upon was the fact that I was wearing a lovely pair of shoes which were highly shined. And it boosted my confidence. I, I sort of skipped out of the elevator thinking, I've got the right shoes on today for whatever situation I encounter. And absolutely, those were the sort of responses I received from people who responded to my request to give me some idea of how good quality footwear had altered their lives in some way. So whilst it might not be the extreme that Jeremy Clarkson suggests that you know he chooses people who work for him based on the quality of their shoes, I think the reality is somewhere near that. Whereas if you went into a job interview looking fairly well presented but you had outstanding shoes on, I think it's going to tip the balance in your favour. And I think it may tip the balance in your favour because it boosts your confidence. You will feel more, you know, you'll have more self-esteem knowing that your shoes are representing you in the best possible way. So I just reiterate my observation that I've said in the past. Make sure, if nothing else on your outfit, that your shoes are the best possible reflection of the person that you are. Make sure they're good quality, that they're well maintained, and at least have a shine on them. And you will set foot in this world with the best foot forward. So there we go, folks. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if you've been in a situation where people have made comments on your shoes or it has tipped the balance in a scenario in your life. I'd love to hear it. Put it in the comment section below. If you'd like to uh, appreciate this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more like this, click the old red button and subscribe. Now, you can support the channel by buying me a coffee or becoming a patron. And my patrons get additional videos and we've got a different dialogue going over there on the patron page where us little army of chaps have many conversations and help each other out. So, until the next time, take care of yourselves. Put your best foot forward as long as that foot has got a shiny, good quality shoe on it and the world will open up in front of you. So until the next time, take care and I'll see you again very soon.